Hello, and welcome everybody to this bowl session on American Moore. My name is Nathan Winkelstein. I'm the Associate Artistic Director at Red Bull Theater, and I'll be moderating tonight's discussion. Thank you all so much for joining. Uh, the American Moor is a production that we did at Red Bull Theater in 2019 off Broadway, and we just did a reading of it this last Monday. It is still available to be watched on the Red Bull website um, and on YouTube until tomorrow at 7 p.m. So if you're one of the few in the audience today who hasn't watched it yet, you still have time, and I very much recommend you do. In tonight's uh, seminar, a lot of it is going to be questions coming from you, the audience. So you will see at the bottom of your screen a Q&A button, which you can click on and you can type in questions that you wish to ask there. And I will peruse them throughout the evening and try to get to as many of them as possible. We will be, if anybody has any problems with that Q&A function, actually try to write into it or raise your hand if you are confused and I will try to write you privately. Now I'm going to introduce our guests for this evening. First is Erica Lynn. She is the scholar who wrote the about the play on our website. She is an associate professor of theater and performance at the Graduate Center CUNY. Uh, we also have Kim Weald, who has directed numerous iterations of this production, including our own. Uh, she is the head of directing at the Carnegie Mellon, Mellon University. And then we have Josh Tyson, who is one of the actors from the show. He plays the character of director. And then, of course, needing absolutely no introduction, the star of the show and the playwright of the show, Keith Hamilton Cobb. If you could all join me now, that would be great. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, Hi. Thanks so much for joining this evening. I appreciate you all coming on, as I'm sure do all of our guests this evening. Um, before we get into their questions, which I know will start coming hot and heavy, I'd love to just get uh, started a little bit. Um, Erica, with you, when we asked you to come on and to write about this play and to do this, do the research, I know, of course, that we gave you particular tasks in terms of writing about the play, but I am curious what you found most compelling as a scholar coming to this play uh, when you read it. Well, one of the amazing things about this play is that it takes a very troubling play of Shakespeare's and um, turns it into a contemporary story that allows us to discuss race in America today. And part of what is so um, amazing about this play um, that I picked up on this time in the Zoom reading that I didn't have previously um, is thinking about the way in which Shakespeare's language is so beautiful, yet some of the stories by today's standards are so problematic. And so one of the things that I was thinking about was the way in which eloquence actually works. Othello is the most eloquent person in this play and speaks so beautifully and Keith speaks so beautifully as the, um, as the actor in the play American Moore. And the way in which um, that connects up with the metaphor of listening, of what it means for us to listen to each other and to have a conversation now in 2020. So I'll just stop there and uh, turn the floor over to somebody else. So thank you. Of course, thank you, uh, Erica and Kim. The other, the other face that, of course, is so important behind the scenes, but that our audience probably doesn't know. Uh, you've been with this project now, I, I think, for seven years. Is that correct? Yeah, just to that. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd be curious from from your perspective as sort of the outside eye that a director is. Um, what has been your experience working on this very unique piece of theater and watching it evolve and grow over the course of the seven years? Mm. Um, you know, any new play development, it's a collaboration with that I work on with the playwright. It's a journey. I will say, you know, Keith and I actually met as undergrads at NYU. Um, we've been friends for about 30 years. Um, and there's a deep and abiding trust uh, between us. In working on this piece, it has also challenged, I think, both of us. Um, it's deepened our commitment to 
the importance of this piece and what it's saying. Uh, and as Erica said, having these conversations, you know, we, we've been wanting people to engage in this from the get go, but now there's this ever pressing urgency that uh, finally people are responding in a way that um, we've, we've, we've been pressing upon. Um, I think also a, a really important part of this is listening as a director. That's what we do. We have to listen, listen very closely to the creator, the playwright, um, and help them shape the journey uh, that they are endeavoring uh, to, to make real and wrought uh, in a three-dimensional way on the stage. Thank you, Kim. And I, I feel like we're already dancing around a whole bunch of things that are going to make fascinating discussion momentarily. Um, before I, I, I'm so, I have so many follow ups, but before I do, I do want to toss it over to um, the playwright himself, Keith. Hi, Keith. Hi. Um, and I just want to ask just, I, I feel like a lot of us from watching this this play, which I've been just an observer in, in this process, both on uh, off Broadway and for this reading. Um, have been really fascinated to know what the journey was that took you from being uh, the actor frustrated with all of this to the actor who turns playwright and writes this immensely eloquent um, play about an experience that uh, is it at w both unbelievably personal and yet shockingly un like universal for so many people, especially BIPOC performers and creatives experiences. And I just wonder what, what inspired you to write it and what you hoped to have come of it. And is that what came of it and how that has been for you? Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's, I think you said it, Nathan, that it's certainly what is coming of it uh, right now. It is on a trajectory, has been, for you know, since its inception, uh, towards a, a, a wider and wider audience and engendering a larger and larger uh, discussion, and it started just as a way for me to vent uh, 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 a critical mass within me of feeling and emotion and frustration and anger and pain and awareness uh, about who and who I was and where I sat within this America and this American industry. And it all came out as such. And uh, it was recognized by colleagues at first to have uh, really potent, important energies that needed to be developed. And then as soon as it was put before an audience, they responded in the same way that validated those, those earlier thoughts and ideas. Uh, then other creatives like Kim, like Josh, uh, came along and any number of other people uh, in production and pre-production uh, with uh, strong belief and uh, ideas and support and it has grown into this thing that it is. Um, I don't, I, I tell people very honestly, I don't, you know, I, 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 my skills do not match this play generally this play is, is 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 something that was channeled it was you know there was a, there's some there are some ancestors and energies in, in 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 the culture and in the world that are speaking uh through this play and i think we all as uh, creatives recognize that and have been running behind that and, and the focus really is not us at this point it's about generating a larger and larger discussion because we're all perpetually even after seven years we all cry about this play you know we all we all sit there and are moved regularly by by this play and we do it together we you know and uh, and 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 so the process now is where can we where can how do we do that how do we continue to put it forward in whatever form that maintains its integrity and 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 bolsters uh focus on the issues that it seeks to expose. Thanks, Keith. And and um, so now for those of you listening, we're definitely gonna be moving into the Q&A session with you all. So please do write, because I don't have too many pre-prepped questions. I mean, I'm sure we could all just talk for an hour up here, but it would be more fun to have some stuff from you. Um, I would like, while a few of them start coming in, 
Um, Josh, you, you of course, exist in such an interesting role in this play, um, as we've, we've heard a lot of people already speak about the role of listening and hearing. And of course, you both as an actor in performance and in rehearsal and as a character, listen and hear this play, probably in two very different ways, I would guess. But I, I'm curious how you, you've also been with this project for quite a while now. And I'm, I'm curious how you have found the experience of working on this play and, and hearing this play, um, both as a character, both as an actor dealing with a character and as a, as a person. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a lot, that's a lot <laughs> to back there. Um, uh, I'm the white guy, right? I, uh, I, um, uh, as the line says, uh, I'm, I'm more, you know, I'm, I can never just be me, you know, as, as the director and stuff. And so I stand in for a lot, you know, and, uh, you know, as, a, as an actor, you know, it was difficult to hear a lot of these things. And, you know, um, as the character, you know, the character doesn't hear the inner monologue of, of the actor, uh, of Keith's actor, but Josh, the actor, certainly hears it, and and it was very uh, difficult at times uh, in the rehearsal room, specifically, you know, where uh, I'm not hidden in the dark, or there's no uh, abyss separating Keith and I. It really is just he just giving it to me, um, and uh, it was difficult to say the least, you know. Um, but I think you know, kind of what what Erica said and 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 Kim wrote a, a beautiful director's note in the in the program the Red Bull uh, program about just listening you know and, and I think that's what Keith's play kind of asks of us uh, as a society certainly as a, a Caucasian man he's you know I can do a deal do stand to do a lot of that uh, so so for me it was about being there to to allow space for for Keith, uh, uh, the actor, uh, and Kim uh, to to do their thing and and, and support and and listen and uh, you know give my input when I felt it was helpful, but more importantly, know to 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 make an, enough space or allow enough space for Keith to do his thing. And so it's, it was profound. I, I learned a lot about myself short answer <laughs> no yeah i mean every one of these answers has been like the oh god each one of these could go on for forever right. um we do have a, a um one question from the audience members uh, this is from michael bernstein who's seen this show a number of times and he watched the reading of it online as well and uh noted the different impact and focus of actually having the director visible throughout um during the live stream versus being invisible invisible in the theater and was this a choice that changed in different incarnations when it was on stage or was it unique to the was it unique to this reading uh keith do you want to jump on that one i i would love to have kim speak to that because yeah. because she has sort of shepherded that evolution through several incarnations when, um, when we first started working on this piece, the director wasn't seen at all and was just a voice, uh, a voiceover. Um, and Keith speaks about, uh, just in, in daily life, talks about that being the voice, that white man's voice that, that he cannot escape. Um, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, Keith, so oh, please jump well, You've in. heard it enough times, you're, you're on point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, and, and yet, and we always, um, as, as much as we could, we always had a live actor off stage in another room speaking in real time. So responding, because that's very important, listening, still listening and responding in the moment, to Keith, a couple times it was recorded. Um, and I, as a director, 
was certainly curious what it, it would be like to bring the director in into the house, into the, the audience. And Keith and I had a lot of conversations about this uh, and um, disagreements about it, actually, you know, um, and I completely understood where he was coming from and why he wanted it a certain way. And then we had the great good fortune of being invited to the Globe in London, um, Shakespeare's Globe London, to present for their first Shakespeare and race uh, conference symposium. And we were to do the piece in the Sam Wanamaker Theater, which if anybody knows is this beautiful, very intimate, made of wood restoration theater that is um, lit by candles. And there really isn't technology. And it created this opportunity for us, which was to put Josh in the house and see what happens. So before we went, we rehearsed at Luna stage. Uh, we had some development time there. And we first, and that's where we first tried Josh in the audience. And it was kind of revelatory what happened, the response, how you could really hear people shift in their seats in a very different way. Um, and we kept refining it and refining it. And then when we got to um, the Wanamaker and we did it there, we asked, we were asking the audience afterwards, there, there was a talk back, um, what their response was. And uh, people, it just really resonated with them to have Josh in the audience. It was, it made it very alive, immediate. It casts the audience. It made some people very uncomfortable, um, uh, challenged audience members. And so that's how we decided to keep it. Um, it, it brought the issues also in some ways even made them even more present and kind of threw the gauntlet down of you have to deal with this because you're smack in the middle of it now. Um, and then for the reading uh, on Tuesday, the choice was made uh, to do something very casual. Um, and I was not a part of the conversation about whether to have Josh on or off camera. That was Keith's call. So Keith, do you want to talk about that? I just thought uh, in keeping with, with what was casual about it to, you know, we had gone through a couple of incarnations or, or at least discussions with the artist director, with Jesse Berger about well, what, what should we make? Do we want to do a Zoom production? Uh, do we want to just air a, 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 a video? And we came up with this. I thought, you know, maybe they should just hear it read. Maybe they should just hear the words, you know, and take the focus off us as much as we can. And that is what gave rise to the idea of just have us all in inequality uh, in, in, in the screen. That shifted a little bit because so much of it is in monologue and so much of it is about this man talking that, you know, uh, my image was made large for parts of that. But overall, I thought that it was, it was the right choice to have all of us there. Um, but just, to, just to, to, to jump backwards for a second, you know, Kim w was talking about um, uh, the choice to you know to take to, to to make to make a brave choice to try something that that wasn't really what had been established originally and and, and see how it worked and then once you get the response from that to make the choice to stay with that or to go deeper or to you know and Erica and I were earlier to, uh, this to, today speaking at a conference at Hofstra on on, on Zoom. And we were talking about what, what can we do that isn't just continuing the money cycle of American theater. Let's do the things that are safe. Let's do the things that we know they like and just, just keep money. And, this, and, this, and, and, and certainly in Shakespeare, this is death because we end up recycling this canon again and again and never seeing anything but what we have seen. You know, And I don't need to see another incarnation of any of these plays if it's not gonna be something that 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 opens a new door, you know. That that shocks the culture into something else, a different direction. And I think I so so I think that that is is uh, to a certain extent what 
what we were doing, what we what 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 we did there, because it really was rev revelatory. Uh, his new presence and how it began to move the audience in in in, in certain directions. You know, some prof some profoundly, some that people are still talking about it. Uh, thanks, Keith. And, and I will simply say uh, from the, again, having seen both iterations, that it was fascinating on the reading. Uh, we got to see Josh the whole time, but I think that like on a stage version, that might have given me an out. Like if Josh was up on stage with you, I might have been like, well, he's talking to Josh. He's not talking to this 30 year old white director. Right. He's talking. He's talking to that one. Um, but weirdly, it seemed it worked unbelievably in the reading because of the direct into the camera was it didn't matter that Josh was on camera with you. I was pinned to my seat by you. And it, it ended up it, it was incredibly compelling in both ways that I think what you guys were talking about, about casting the audience. I love that way of describing it, of not allowing us to separate this from who we are was extremely compelling. But that's not my job. I'll ask another question. Um, I, I like this one. This is from James Smith, and he's asking for Keith. And he's asking if any of the directors you have worked with have been more sensitive to the issues your play raised than others, or are is there sort of a, are they all equally clueless? Uh, you, no, I, I don't think I don't think any two people are equally anything. So so. No, uh, I, I, I I think that the human animals instrument responds mostly, most often, and the and 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 the most basic sense to fear. That is the driver. Of 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 of, uh, of pretty pretty much all life, you know. And in in one celled animals, we can't call it fear. We call it you know some some you know nervous system you know re reaction. But that's what it is. Uh, and that fear is constructed of any number of things, you know. Uh, 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 for um, for somebody uh, trying to 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 maintain the presidency you know the particular inhabitant of the of, of the white house there's there are issues of you know love me love me love me what will happen if nobody loves me you know and that's a fear uh for uh some ceo in some company uh looking at his 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 his, his bonus package each each year and knowing that it is ridiculous but but needing to make it anyway he's thinking about well my family and my the, the 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 world is scary so you know my son and my son's son will never have anything to worry about so this i'm just going to make this choice i'm going to rationalize this to be the right thing that's fear and when you meet with a hollywood director or a director of a major uh, uh regional regional theater that is getting huge amounts of endowment from from uh, uh rich white donors and uh, as, as a board of rich white people looking at looking, bringing down their neck uh, and they are needing to make choices that make them look like they are uh, 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 supporting that institution as that institution exists, not trying to make it something else, not trying to use it as his playground for radical introspection and, and, and experimentation, but continuing the money cycle, right? It's, it's, it's art as money, which never works, right? Uh, and different directors and artist directors will behave differently under those conditions. Some will take more chances than others. Um, it becomes a question of even if even if a director is quote unquote taking chances, what are you taking ch chances about? What is it? What is it that you are seeking to interrogate in this production that you're doing for real, or are you just trying to be you know? diverse right have you just picked up the zeitgeist and run with it right or are we really looking at something right and that even to broach that discussion with the director that becomes frightening right because immediately you look like an intelligent black man who really has thought about this and is really going to challenge them to show up and make their product. I just wanted to come direct Hamlet, man. I didn't want to, you know, <laughs> you know I just thought I was going to pay me. I got to direct Hamlet and go home, you know? So, you know, there, 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 there is all of that. And uh, it, it, it differs from, from, from place to place, from, from uh, case to case. 
Um, thanks. I, I want to ask because you've talked about it a lot and Laura, uh, well, she's got sort of one of these names that's like a very modern Facebook style name. So I think her name is Laura Rowlands is asking a question, which I think maybe ties into this because you've, you've talked already a little bit about, um, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but your frustration over the, the performing Shakespeare plays because, right, with no, with no motivation, um, and, and just to rehash. So just to take that from the other side, Laura Rollins asks how you got your passion for Shakespeare to begin with. Uh, I, uh, you know, that that part of, of American Moore is, is kind of autobiographical. Not all of it is uh, by any by any stretch, but 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 that is that I was studying English and, and looking at these plays and had but to see them performed. Luckily, the first couple of times in ways that were, I thought, really good, really impactful to me so that the language made a certain sense that it didn't make to me even just reading it off the, the page myself. The actors in, 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 in live performance were able to impart something to me uh, in, this, in, in this work, besides just the beauty of the language itself, uh, uh, a depth of understanding, a depth of feeling. Um, so I was really sort of hooked and uh, then I, I don't know if it was my it was my second year at NYU. I switched studios and I was involved in an experimental program that they were uh, uh, embarking upon at Playwrights Horizons, wherein all of the class class work, the studio work, whether it was voice, speech, movement, text analysis, all revolved around one singular text of Shakespeare for that entire semester. And so I came away from that really wanting to do that um, and you know with 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 varying degrees of of, of success you know and uh, uh, as I was uh, some of my opening comments earlier at Hofstra with 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 Erica were about you know if there were a way to go back and see what roles you didn't get because of what you weren't which is perhaps good enough among the competition as you grow and stro strove to do your thing and what roles you didn't get because of what you were, which was big and black and boisterous and intelligent and bringing a, 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 a quote unquote difficult presence to, to, this, to the particular scenario. And of course, we don't know, you know, what we do know is there wasn't a Hamlet, there wasn't a Romeo, there wasn't, you know, and I missed them terribly. You know, I miss them terribly. There's still time. Hamlet's age is sort of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hamlet, <laughs> Hamlet's a strange one. I mean, there's a there's there's there's, there's, there's a way. You know, there's a way. Then, then again, you know, I'll say, you know, uh, I I was when I found out that uh, John Douglas Thompson was doing Hamlet in uh, in San Francisco at uh, what's that ACT? Uh, I think he did it at the old Globe. I think he did it at the Old Globe. Was it Old Globe or, a, or, a, or AC? One of those two. Yeah. And uh, I remember I saw the advertisement and um, he had told me he was doing it. And I thought, wow, so what's, 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 you know, what, what, what's, what, what, <laughs> what is uh, 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 Polonius? What is, uh, 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 was Claudius. 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 What's Claud what is what is Claudius? Uh, 102, you know. Um, and it's interesting because John is a wonderful actor, and nobody can take that away from him. But you know, it, it can it can start to look like he's the only wonderful actor that you know, and and and, and they're going to reach and they're going to stick him into stuff that you know. And like, here's this this Hamlet, and nobody was thinking about nobody was thinking about let's create. A 60 plus year old Hamlet. They were thinking about how can we do something with John Thompson? And so it became, well, it will make him the 60 year old Hamlet. You know, not, it wasn't, I'm always wondering where's the cart and where's the horse? You know? Yeah. No, uh, it's, a, it's a good question. I mean, I actually heard about that Hamlet. I heard it was great. But um, yeah, you do wonder what the inspiration was for it. Can I, before I go on, there's a lot of questions. Um, but Erica, I'd love to actually, um, toss you that same question about how you originally, if you did uh, originally fall in love with Shakespeare, how that came about for you? 
Yeah, I started in high school acting in Shakespeare plays at the Folger Secondary School Festival. Um, I was lucky enough to grow up in the DC area and um, we would do 30 minute um, condensed versions of Shakespeare's plays for other Shakespeare nerds like us in high school with no parents allowed because it's a small theater. Mm -hmm. And um, all the while I thought I was gonna be an architect um, and then I went to college and I thought, I don't actually like drawing pictures of buildings, so that's not going to work. Um, and I thought I would be a physics and English double major because I thought, well, this would be good because we I had this theory about the different poles of knowledge and trying to be a Renaissance person. And so I, meanwhile, um, I wanted to make friends, so I decided to audition for a play and then I acted in a bunch of plays, but I fell in love with the language of Shakespeare and then acting and performing in those plays allowed me to understand that on a very visceral level. So I end up dreaming in early modern English a lot of the time now. Um, but so it's, um, it's a weird thing because when I was um, watching the reading, or I should say listening to the reading on Monday, I did think to myself, he loves Shakespeare as much as I do. Mm. And I thought, but Keith and I are not white. So what does it mean? How did we connect with it then? Because I certainly did not see myself in the plays. Okay? But nevertheless, there was something about it that um, really drew me. And I think it's also the stories and the way the language works in dialogue um, and in banter and the structure, the rhetorical structure of the plays. And I just, I loved it. I thought it was fun. It was a thing I was doing. I didn't know that I was going to go to grad school and study about it and write about it for the rest of my life. But here we are. <laughs> Thanks. And yeah, um, Keith, do you want, I, I, I just feel like this is an important aspect of it. What Erica mentioned about like, I can go on about why I love Shakespeare and I'm sure Kim and Josh could too, but we are reading fundamentally characters who share the same race with us. What, was there a particular aspect of what Shakespeare brought to the page that you feel like really did make you fall in love with him, like in a micro way? Just, to, just the other playwright who does it to a to 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 a great extent, or has done it to a great extent, is Mamet, who has a language unto himself, within which the depth of emotion is, and, and they're very different. You know, uh, Mamet does it with 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 cadence and cursing, and you know, and 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 and. and Shakespeare does it with a, a, a type of eloquence that none of his contemporaries were able to fit into that verse structure, right? They couldn't, you saw him trying, right? Just to stick everything into that, into that, that pentametric structure. None of them could do it, you know? And I think it has some, something having to do with the fact that he could, that, that, that the rhythm works so well that it carries emotion like nothing I had experienced, you know? Uh, Makes sense. Oh. Um, great. Well, you know, wait, oh, cool. you know uh, 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 Lewis says, uh, uh, "Your breath, your breath first kindled the dead coals of war betwixt this chastised kingdom and myself, and now it is far too huge to be blown out with that same weak wind which enkindled it." Fuck me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't say that. You can't say that in a contemporary play. Right. Yeah, that's that. It always that. That's I. I love that quote. Um, I always use the one, the Macduff one, the uh, "Oh hell kite, cut short all intermission" is another one of those ones where you just can't. Yes. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> like it's, um, it's its own game. Let me toss it to our other two um participants, Kim and Josh. Uh, there's a couple of questions here that I'm gonna sort of combine. Um, how do you feel? How do you both feel about the play? Um, and has being a part of the creative process of bringing American more to the stage changed the way you see American theater and its processes? And then on top of that, Kim, if you could talk about um, an example of like an issue inside this play um, where you and uh, Keith really had to had to discuss and decide um, and, and push against each other, like being a director with the playwright and what that experience was like. 
uh, if you don't mind. Um, and Josh, do you want to go first and then we'll toss it to Kim for that? Yeah, well, well what's the question? Uh, how do I feel about the play? And, and Yeah, I mean, I feel like you gave us a decent part of that at the beginning. Yeah. I, I do wonder about the second half, about has it, there's a huge discussion these days with uh, We See You, um, White American Theater and all of that stuff. And ha- this play is ahead of that. Mm-hmm. This it's existed long before that. And has it affected the way you now walk into a theater process and look around and see do you, those the structures in place and so on? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I used to be able to quote this play because I've heard it like so many times. But Keith talks about um, ignorance. Um, but it's not a it's not a condemnation so much at, to the director as it is to the systems that are in place, you know. Um, and I think you know this goes in line with what Keith was talking about in the play and just now about him and Erica's experience about not being white and not ha- having these roles and stuff like afforded to them. And you know there wasn't a Hamlet in the Rock or, a, or even a Horatio. You know that's something I never even thought of. You know, and I think that is. Uh, that is eye-opening. I mean, you know, this whole process has been eye-opening to to others' plights, things that I take for granted as being a white male in the theater world. Um, and that's that's very sad. So, yeah, I mean, it absolutely has uh, has opened my eyes a lot. And, uh, you know, so, yes. Thanks. Uh, Kim? Um... So the, I think there are a couple things. I, the first time I saw the piece, I was knocked out. It was in a very early stage down at the Wild Project. And um, I knew that I was hearing something I had not heard before, had not heard publicly before. Keith's performance aside, I just, I couldn't get the text out of my head and things that were being said. And we went to dinner afterwards and he asked me some questions and I said, I have some notes (laughs) if you want them, you know. Um, But I, I said that I thought it was an extraordinary an extraordinary piece of writing, an extraordinary work that needed to be shared and heard and um, that it was vitally important and that I would do everything that I could to help him um, and offered up some suggestions on, on places to send it to, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, for six months, right, Keith, about six months, you, you, you were sending it out, you were sending it to, to theaters and people and no one, no one would pick it up, touch it, really. Um, and he came to me and asked me, he, he didn't want to wait. And I, and I, don't blame him, and asked me if I would work on it with him. Um, and also I'd been through my own journey at that point as a director, and he was aware of my work and what I was doing and and what I think what I stand for as, as a, an artist in the world. And um, we had to have a conversation. I said, you know, I don't know. I think this should be, you know, a, directed by a Black director. And we had a, a real heart to heart conversation about it. And in that moment, I also had a big aha in what he was saying to me, which was, I actually, I'm white, in case you don't know, <laughs> but I can shoulder the burden for him and help to keep pushing it forward, that I have that privilege of, of my skin color. And 
together, you know, we can, we can help each, each other with this journey, which I think has also been something inside of this. Uh, I think our friendship has certainly really deepened. Um, and it was, it was pretty good before. With the question about the things that happened in the rehearsal room, um, there were times when I would question something and not completely understand. Uh, I, I actually can't remember the specific moment in the text, um, but I remember Keith actually saying to me, you, you do not understand this and you never will. And then we had to sit and, and I just had to listen to that and think about it and unpack it. Um, and sit with my own discomfort and own and own that. And, and the, that, 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 that's true. Um, I also was struck, uh, I remember realizing all the roles that, that Keith didn't get to play and being really heartbroken for him and for the rest of us, because if anybody has seen him on stage and, and you know, what a graceful, eloquent, actor he is and his his amazing what he does in illuminating language um and there are moments in the piece where we get kind of glimpses of that um and it, just the profound sadness of of an artist not being seen in the fullness of who they are as an artist in the world uh, and recognizing that that opportunity was um, withheld from him. Um, Keith, I'll ask a question which I think ties into what was just said. This is from Gail. Um, and you clearly poured your heart and soul into this brilliant project. Um, and has this project been... Uh, therapeutic for you as you reflect on your experience and journeys as a black man in America? Um, or I will add, or has it been more like kind of tearing off, <laughs> ripping off the band-aid every time? And then I'll, I'll tag on to that a different question, which is, and do you think that today that the industry is changing in any way um, from when you first started as an actor and from when even from when you first started writing this play? Um, so yes and no to the first part. It is work. It is like tearing off the bandaid, you know, getting, getting, if you, if, if you're really going to do it every night. So, so, uh, that's hard and, and, and stressful, uh, where the therapy comes in, what is therapeutic, uh, is the reactions from the audience either immediately or down the road. And you know, I I don't I, I I I'm afraid I'm going to sit here sounding like a just a just a, a bragging asshole if I talk about the experiences. But you know, you, yeah, when you you know when you go out to the house when we did it in, the first time in Boston in a little theater, there was a young man there from a mixed race family who came from California to visit colleges. Him and his mom. His mom was a white woman. And, and she was outside. He waited in the lobby by himself. And I think I had guests uh, in the in the house. So you know, what we came out to the lobby, I was empty. And he was just standing there, and he was just college age. So he just got out. He was eighteen years old, and he said, "I he said I've 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 lived eighteen years in you know Orange County, uh, California, and I, I've learned more about who I am as a black man in the last hour and a half than I have in all eighteen years of my life." He was in tears, you know, and the the sense of of purpose uh that I, I i feel in this play again i'm getting back to it's no longer about me it's really it's 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 just this piece of work that i 
am in awe of and I discover new things in. And uh, 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 I and the audience at large that comes again and again to, 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 to see it and discover moments that, that, that weren't there last time. And the next time we put it on a stage, we'll all be doing that again. Say, oh shit, how about this? Um, and so there is the therapy, right? I mean, God knows the pain in the ass to push this, this play through the American system that is very much mirrored in the play. You know, the big irony is that the, 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 the things that we have to navigate as, 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 as people trying to get theater makers to take up this play is the very dynamic that happens between actor and director in the play. Well, would you, how about if you change this? Could you be a little less angry there? Because, you know, our audience, you know, why don't you, you know, want, you know, literally, I mean, that's, this is where the shit gets really deep, you know, and, 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 and discussion could go in a, in a, in a, in a really sort of darkly ironic direction, but it's there. And that has been the work and the work has been worth it only because we are having these reactions. Um, uh, to this play and it validates what I understand about the piece. So nobody can tell me, nobody can gaslight me at this point that this isn't an important play, that it's not, that it's not as good as A, B or C thing. I know better because I've watched it and I've watched people with it, you know, all sorts of people. Have you had the other side of the experience? Sorry, this is a question from me. Um, speaking as a white person who's watched your play. Um, like you talk about, like, this is a play that obviously is a, a description of an experience that lots of other people are going through. It's also, it's so eye-opening that it's like a little embarrassing after the fact that it's eye-opening because you're like, this is really obvious when one sits and looks at it. Um, have you had, have you found that you've gotten positive responses from, from, uh, well, from white people who have come and seen the show and been, had their perspectives fundamentally changed? Well, there are always those who you're not going to hear from, right? There, there, there are those who are not going to engage the discussion. So you won't know if they're, if, 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 if they're not buying you and your, and your work and your message, they're going to go away. And they're not going to talk to you about it, or, or, or maybe the, if it's a critic, you might get the the, the 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 bad review, or they might sit with their people that night somewhere and and talk about what the play wasn't. So we'll never know who that is. Our, 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 my sense is the vast majority of people don't do that, and there have been those really interesting experience where experiences where after a talk back, somebody is pushing back and pushing back and pushing, but 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 but, and the more they stand and speak to me and experience themselves being heard, right? Everybody wants to be heard, right? And then being responded to, i.e. taken seriously, just me and you, let's talk. You see their perspective change, you know? And there are those who said, I just, I, I guess I understand better. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow, you know? And they'll see it a second time and say, ah, okay, I didn't, the first time I didn't, there was too much, you know, because it is an onslaught of stuff. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, you know, and producers fear that, interestingly. Producers say, can we, can we stretch out some of this stuff? Can we lose some of this stuff? Because this is a lot and they can't fall. And, 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 and Kim and I have both resisted that, you know. So no, this is this is it. If they if they care, they'll come back again. And those who do, get the get little bits of more stuff. You know, the second time they're ready for it. You know, um, it's just that kind of play. You know, awesome. it's new work, and 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 holds promise because it is new and unique, different. Nathan, right. can I can I add something to that? Of course, yeah, yeah. So it it's interesting because. A um, couple things. We had somebody highly respected mm -hmm. in the theater community, uh, a, a white male artistic director, um, a gatekeeper, see it and talk um, to Keith about it uh, and said, well, who is it? Who's it for? Who's who's the audience? And, you know, what? It, well, what do you mean exactly? Well, I'm a white person and I'm in the audience, but I was aware that the response I was having as a white person was very different from the 
from the Black and the BIPOC student, um, uh, audience members. And that's, that's the point. <laughs> That's that's the point. Um, we also heard from white audience members the profound impact that it had on them, and that that um, it may it was eye opening. And we also heard from some people, some producers. It's unrelenting. It's unrelenting. It just doesn't let up. And that's what Keith is also talking about is, you know, well, can you just soften it a little bit or spread it out a little bit? And I remember turning to a producer at one point who wanted me to get Keith to do some, some cuts and I was refusing and it got very heated. And um, I finally said, do you not think that this is his experience as a black man in the world? that what he has, that it has been unrelenting. And so what you're experiencing, the experience as an audience member, as a white audience member of this might just be a little bit similar to what he has lived his whole life. Thank, thank you, Kim. I, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to circle it back to the question because we have about we have about five to ten minutes left and i just think it's a really important question i'd actually be curious to hear all of your thoughts on it which is the question about has the the acting world improved recently in these ways and by perhaps more importantly how can it um, and I wonder if, I realize that's a massive question. I'm not expecting us to solve it, but, um, I wonder if like just people could speak to that brief, briefly before we go, because in some ways it feels like it's, there's not the moral to the story, but like the, one of the things that we have to face when we look in the mirror is, well, it's great that we just watched this play and kind of woke up. Now, what do we do? Um, and I wonder, uh, uh, Erica, could you speak to that first? Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, everybody wants to have an easy answer to this question in the sense that everyone wants to know what it is that they can do. Um, and um, what I often say when people ask me that question is, it's all tactics. You see an opportunity, take it. You get creative, okay? You come up with an idea of how it is that we can change the world and build the community we would like to see, mm -hmm. right? The world we would like to have, the inclusive, uh, generative, robust, loving, affectively meaningful world that we all want to live in, right? Um, the, um, there is nobody in charge. There's nobody um, with some grand strategy telling you what to do. In any given moment, all of your actions um, have certain kinds of effects. One of the things that I think is great about this play is it asks us to look at ourselves. Mm -hmm not about what you have done wrong. I don't care. It's not about how you feel. And did you feel guilty? Okay, maybe you do. That's not the point. Okay. The point is take that empathize with another human being and then take that energy, whatever it is, if you feel guilty, if you feel, um, you know, energized, if you have awkward or uncomfortable feelings, take that energy and put it into work, do the labor, mm. do the work, build a community, right? How about getting together a discussion group of your family? How about encouraging them to read the play and discuss it together? How about encouraging them to discuss other books together? How about asking them to talk to their friends? How about creating more opportunities in your local community or with your, um, in your workplace? If somebody isn't willing to talk about it, the most important thing, right, is white people talking to white people about questions of race and inclusion, um, because this is what will change the entire society, that this is how it is that we say this is important to us. And so when the, it's not about call out culture, it's not about cancel culture, it's about building a world we want to live in together. And I think that that's how it is that we can take energy from this play and bring it outside the playhouse in order to build something better and use it as a way, not just to start conversations, but to genuinely change American theater and beyond into something, a place where we want to live. Thank you. I, I picked the right person to go first. Yes, yes. Thank you, Erica. Um, I won't. I feel like after that, I'm not going to 
force anybody else to to add but if anybody has anything additional that they'd like to add to that um because we're going to be wrapping up quite soon uh so if there's any additional t things to add i will say to all of the other people who ask questions thank you they are really wonderful questions um as you can see these conversations tend to go in a certain direction and so we t we took the questions that made the most sense in there but it doesn't mean that your questions weren't brilliant and that i didn't read them and appreciate them i'm just sorry they didn't make it on the show here's a question nathan do do do, do we have to cut off at the half hour mark? Do we have an extra 10 minutes that we can go for the people who are still? Um, we Yeah, we could go for, for 10 minutes. And a bunch of these questions are sort of more like smaller questions, kind of yes or no's if we want to roll through them. I, I, I would love to give, you know, I, I, I always tell people, you, you don't write a play about begging a discussion and they refuse to have a discussion. You know, um, and, and, and all of our post shows have been problematic in that way. Um, if I could just sort of start off by by, by uh, tacking something on to, to Erica's response to the last question. I think it's very important for all of us to know, and more of us are learning is in, in this current historical moment, that American racism and American capitalism are inextricably linked. They are one thing. They were built as one thing. They existed as one thing and have always existed as that one thing. So as long as our, our art is about capitalism, it will be racist. Right. And 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 the thing about the insidious structure of American capitalism is that the 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 animal has embraced a privileged class to the extent that they don't feel privileged. They don't know their privilege. They don't they don't they don't grok it in that way. They don't you know, the, 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 their, their minds don't embrace in that way. So it is more than difficult to do I don't I, I and, and Erica jump in and correct me if I'm wrong but the things that she is suggesting if you see something get up and make a change the opiating effect of 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 the 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 the, the American racial structure on white America exists in a way and for reasons that are truly insidious and are hard to stay aware of, are hard to get up every day and, 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 and make note that this is what I'm living in and these are the things I can do. But that's what's going to change the theater because again, the theater w is within this larger structure. It is behaving like the structure, right? So we all have to make different choices. Thank you, Keith. Um, here, let me ask you, uh, let me ask you one of these. Um, this is a play for, this is a question from Shaney uh, Stepakoff. I apologize if I messed that up. Um, it's talking about the ending of the play. Um, and she and her 22 year old daughter watched the play online. And, and she feels that the end is ambiguous and leaves open at least a sliver of a possibility that perhaps he has a chance of getting the part. As playwright, did you intend for the ending to allow any sliver of hope at all? Yep. Yep. And, I, and, and people take it different ways and they, and they should. For me, it is very hopeful. Others see none at all. It may depend on how Josh and I choose to play it on that particular night. You know, whatever, whatever happens in the moment may get different energy. But if, 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 if I think it's wonderful that they're feeling the hope, that they're feeling the possibility. Um, this one is actually kind of right along with that one to some extent. Um, which is it's it's asking again about the relationship between the actor the actor and the director character um and uh, well i'm just going to read this one word for word because it's quite a good question um a lot of the insightful lines are the ones that aren't quote actually said between keith and josh but the ones keith says to us the audience under his breath or in an inner monologue and chooses not to say um, because he wants the job. Did you ever debate about whether or not you would have wanted Keith to actually say these lines to Josh, the clueless director, even at the cost of getting the part? Or was it always certain that they just stay private words for the audience to hear? Uh, so the short answer was, is that the, 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 the inner monologue is always in danger of becoming an outer monologue throughout, you know, it always, you know, and, and, and I think that is a part of the, the actor's psychological journey is not knowing what quite what is public and what is not. What did he hear up? Oh, he heard that because he responded to it. He heard something, you know, uh, and that and that fuels his 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 anxiety uh, uh, 
throughout the piece until it all comes bubbling out at the end. Uh, so I think that, you know, we're, we're already taking uh, a chance on, on getting our audience to believe that this audition would have lasted more than 30 seconds, <laughs> right? Uh, this is the this is this is the most tolerant director I've ever met in my life, <laughs> right? And 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 so I can't I can't push that any further. And I think that the character knows that he can't push it any any, any further. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And by the way, that reads what you described again. Just speaking as an audience member, the the fact that we're never a hundred percent sure what is what is public what is private are we inside your head are we the director what is that actually uh the kind of mental vertigo of that is actually an extremely effective uh, like ah i don't know the drama of the piece is disturbing on like 18 different meta levels um so it works very well um it's totally uh this is from richard brenner i was totally intrigued by the piece and incredibly moved by it and the acting but wonder if uh you had a problem dealing with the contradiction that or if you even saw it as a contradiction, that Shakespeare it was Caucasian and so was likely as shallow about the Black experience as any contemporary white director might be. Hmm. No, I, you know, I don't, I never indict Shakespeare. I have never indicted Shakespeare and anybody I talked to. Uh, we, we were talking about that in uh, uh, Stephen Greenblatt's Harvard class yesterday, last, last night. Uh, Shakespeare wrote what he wrote, given the experience that he had, uh, the environment that he lived in, uh, the colloquial context and his, his, his tools. We get this thing that's not even that. There's no extant text of what he wrote. It comes through editors, people with agendas, you know, uh, 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 scholars, all sorts of people put their stink on this and we get this the thing and they say this is it this is this is Shakespeare and we take it it's you know it's uh, there's 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 it's public domain we do whatever we want to with it and my point is always if you are taking this text and bringing me to it if you are hiring me then it's about me it's about what I what I see and what I understand and you have to give me that license it's no longer what Shakespeare you know, and I'm not saying we need to, we, we, we still need to serve the play, right? But we don't need to serve him, right? I don't know him. You know, I don't know what he wanted, you know? I would imagine Shakespeare might be pretty excited about all this noise, you know? Do what you want. Go do, <laughs> do the play. Just pay me, you know? Yeah, he's just ticked he's not getting paid the rights for the last 350 years of it or whatever. Um Great. Oh, I love that answer as a Shakespeare nerd. Um, uh, Erica, got to give you a, a fun one. Uh, who in Shakespeare do you feel slash hear the most? Who, although they may not be a person of color, has a story that reflects your personality? Uh, well, I hope Jenny it's not. Um, the, um, that's a really tough question because I really don't see a character in Shakespeare who reflects my personality or story exactly. Right? There are very few female characters, for one. There are very few queer female characters. There are no queer Asian American female characters, unless somebody has got something that I don't know about. Um, the, um, the part that really spoke to me uh, was King Lear. Um, and it's not because I, um, I hope I, I'm not a tyrant um, or, um, you know, um, a, uh, or petty or vindictive, right? But the, the emotion in the oh reason not the need speech, mm. right? When um, when the Goneril and Regan are saying, you know, oh well, what what do you need these hundred knights? What needs you fifty? What needs you twenty five? What needs you ten or five or one, right? Um, and he says, oh reason not the need, right? Our basis beggars are in the poorest things superfluous, right? It's not about what you need. It's the you know. The extra, the extra is what makes us human, right? And I was 17 years old and that speech spoke to me and I wanted to play King Lear, but no one would cast me as King Lear uh, because, you know, not old white guy, right? They want to cast me as Titania. I can't, and also Ariel in uh, The Tempest. Why? Exotic other, right? Alien, right? Uh, like not, and, and, you know, 
you know, I can't play the Juliet. That's got to go the blonde girl. You know, these are the these are the the challenges. But the the feel, the emotion that's true behind there, right? That speaks. And as I've gotten older, there are other speeches that also speak, right? And I have to just finally just plug um, Mistress Page and Mary Wives of Windsor is a great <laughs> role. Um, and that's how I got my first Shakespeare complete works. Right? I was 15 years old on the Folger stage and they would give out uh, funny prizes for best shepherd, best servant, also best act acting prizes. And so I played Mistress Page. We had a um, blonde girl playing Mistress Ford and a black girl playing Falstaff. And um, the, uh, it was so much fun, the way in which Mistress Page and Mistress Ford relate to each other, talking about, can you believe this guy sending us the same love letter? And believe, it, he thinks women don't talk to each other. <laughs> Who is this guy? So anyhow, so I really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed that. And you could say it kind of sent me down this path, which happily turned out well, but there was no guarantee of that along the way. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, I'm really curious about Josh and Kim. Can you answer that question? I, you know, I don't share the same affection for Shakespeare as uh, uh, as as some people do. Um, but I will say I am very enamored with people who do have that affection for Shakespeare, like Keith and other friends in my circle. And, Hearing you talk about that, Erica, was was a joy. So I can appreciate others' love of Shakespeare, absolutely. So, Kim? Yes. Um, so there are two roles that come to mind for me, Hamlet and Banquo. Um, I think Hamlet, you know, there's just, I, I would have loved to have played Hamlet uh i think i think i i think i'm constantly in the to be or not to be space <laughs> in my head all the time you know in banquo um and i have played banquo um and i would have liked to have had the opportunity to play banquo again um i think uh because of of the issues of of loyalty but then seeing the the moment of of seeing and understanding and and sacrifice um you know he he certainly sacrifices his own life for his for his son for flayons you know flea flayons um yeah I, i'd like to amend i have a, a strong affection towards son to mcduff <laughs> <laughs> it was the first play I ever did, ever. Uh, I was in middle school and the high school school teacher needed a middle school t kid to go play son to Macduff. And, and that curse, that play is cursed, they say. And my grandfather actually died on opening night of that play. Wow. So I have a lot of love for son to Macduff. That's my... You know, it's funny because Keith, the, the women in Shakespeare, I, I have not been that attracted to, really. They don't, they don't, they don't do it. And I've played Kate in Shrew. Well, they haven't been given a lot. I mean, they um, that, that, well, oh, that was, you know, five, five. Oh, anyway, <laughs> sorry, uh, <laughs> I gotta go there. <laughs> Keith, other than Titania, who is it for you? Richard II, hands down, hands down. Just do what I say. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> We are amazed, and thus far have we stood to watch the fearful bending of thy knee, because we thought ourselves thy lawful king. <laughs> gotta cast you in that one. Gotta get you in that one. It's gotta happen. Um, yeah, we had a long discussion about that one. That's right. I think your take on it, we gotta see your take in, in that play. Maybe you'll make me like it someday. Um, great. Oh, well, that was fun. Uh, uh, this is a, on, a, on a slightly different note. Um, this is from Christina Ortega uh, for uh, for everyone, but I would guess this is mainly for Kim and Keith. Uh, how does American Moore wrestle with colorism? What reactions has the play received with Keith being light skinned, if any? I remember one person do you, do you remember this kim it one there was one person one talk back somewhere who had we a, out in california it was at uh um 
And, 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 and really the only response was, it's not what the play is about, <laughs> right? It's just, it's just not, it, it adds a layer and an issue that is not really what, 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 what the play is about. Certainly as brown people, there are uh, throughout history, uh, 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 people of different shades of, 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 of brown are treated in different ways for different reasons. But it wasn't any point that I was ever striving to make in the play. So when it comes up, that's the only way I have to respond to it. You did say in that talk back, Keith, which I thought was quite lovely, you sold the person who brought that up to that, please go write that play. Right. I, would love to, yeah. I would love to, to read that. Um, great. Yeah, not about it. <laughs> the, uh, this, I'm trying to wrap my head around this one. Maybe, maybe you all will be able to. Uh, this is also from Laura Rowlands. And this is, do you think this play is life imitating art and can be controversial to a certain extent in real life? Uh, well, one never knows what, where, the, where, where, the, where the line is, or again, where the cart, where the horse is. It life imitating art, or is it art imitating life? It's a little bit of both in that fuzzy area in the middle that we expose, that we shine a light on. Whereas you, 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 you I think you called it vertigo. What, what, what was the term? What kind of vertigo? Oh, like mental vertigo. Yeah, yeah, oh. is extremely impactful. And it works. So I, man, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's both. I mean, it, it is, it is, it is. It was written as art imitating life, and in putting it on a stage, we have experienced lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of life <laughs> imitating art. Well, the meta theatrical aspects of the play are actually one of its strengths, I think, right? This long history, I mean, Hamlet being one of them, right? Of plays that um, have that kind of quality. And it always asks the audience to reflect on itself. Um, and you think about exactly what the act is that you're participating in at that very moment. So part of what I think is the assumption that goes into a question such as this is one that many of us share in this culture, right? But that we might work against, which is that somehow there's a difference right between life and art as opposed to we are all engaged in a community together and that we're trying to actually build something together and that one way to do it is by playing parts playing roles it's a thing you know your uncle might do drunk over the dinner table okay but it's also something that we do in this kind of formalized environment but then we tell stories and that's something else we do in casual uh, dinner time conversation as well um, and that this is um, part of the way in which meta theatricality works is it draws attention to that and in drawing attention to it, it disintegrates the divide between them. Great. Um, from Shauna Seth to Keith, uh, was it always an audition or did you ever consider making it a rehearsal process? The power dynamic is particularly interesting in an audition, but I assumed before seeing the play, it would be in rehearsal. Uh... I think I think I think she's hit it. That it it, it, it is particularly magnified and poignant in, in uh, audition. You know, before the stakes are higher. Once you've gotten the job, there's a whole nother set of dynamics that go on, and it 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 holds in metaphor because uh, Othello is being called to the Senate to make an accounting of himself and answer this charge. I mean, he's he's called for other reasons, but in this moment becomes this thing that we have to get past before we go back to loving you, quote unquote, loving you. We have to get past this, that you did what? All right, let's just figure out whether or not you did that or not, fella, you know? And then, and, and, and then you know, once he's put that aside, it's like he's the noble Moor again, right? You know, but that is life and death, right? We'll kill you if you did this, you know? And uh, uh, so I think again the audition the the the, the audition holds the metaphor better yeah. in rehearsal. Um, oh, and by the way, Keith, uh, the same person who asked that question, Shauna, um, has provided us the answer. I was wrong. You were right. It was absolutely at ACT with John Douglas Johnson. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. Um, so, <laughs> got it in one. Uh, mea culpa. <laughs> um, this uh, this is our, our final question. I think it's actually a lovely one, um, and, it, and there's a lovely sentiment involved. Uh, this is from Emma Atwood. Uh, my question, um, oh, well, I taught this play... Uh, this week to 50 students in rural Alabama, and we watched sections from the live stream together today. Thank you, capitals, for this important piece of theater. My students were especially interested in the physicality of the actor. He's described in such detail in the stage directions, and his size, quote, only imposing if you see him that way, is an important detail that challenges white audiences to consider how they see black men. Mm. Might casting future iterations of this play alter this effect? What might happen without you in the actor role? And I'll add to that, do you hope to see other people do this role? Yes, I hope to see other people do this role. I'm looking forward to that greatly, eagerly. Um, oh, wow. This is a great last question. Um, uh, I think that each person that comes to the role will will will, will bring something different. Um, I, you know, I mean, it, it could get strange out there, like starting to cast, you know, white people and <laughs> like that. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, <laughs> it, that, it, it, it happened. It happened with Mountaintop, right? There was some college where somebody cast a white yeah. Dr. King because they were trying. They had some idea and they were trying to do something so that stuff happens that that you know we're being clever we're being we're doing diversity we're doing cool stuff you know that 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 social justice zeitgeist you know is run away with us so you know but uh, uh, as 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 long as they are 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 are, are men of color of a particular age I think it works. You know, I, I, I have always said that Oth Othello is this large guy, this large presence, you know, the largest presence and the powerful presence and exuding this, this, this power and virility and sexuality. And uh, I've seen littler men do it. And if I've come away thinking that they didn't do it as well, it's because they were not getting into, I've seen little guys who, because they are little guys are the fiercest motherfuckers in the room right? Because they are little guys, right? And they've been little guys all their lives and they don't play and you ain't going to try them, right? And if you can bring that, you know, in the play, that can work. In the street, the four foot seven black guy can look to the cop with the gun like he was six foot two. He scared me, so I shot him. I feared for my life, right? But it was really only because he was black, right? Right, but that four foot seven guy can look like seven feet tall to 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 to, to the wrong white person, like that, right? Seven seven seven, seven foot tall and four hundred pounds, coming at me, and I was frightened, so he's dead. You know? and that's the truth about that. So so you know, I think it's in 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 the casting. It's you know if there's a diminutive actor, it's what he feels. If he feels it, he'll be able to play it. Because, you know, among among African American men, it is fairly universal, and we're finding that the 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 overall energy of the role, this 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 desire to be seen and heard and understood as an individual, is all of ours, right? So, yeah, does that answer the question? Anybody else speak to that? I think you answered it, Keith. Um, thank you. And, and thank you all. Um, it's, it's very different having a discussion on American War than it is on something like Revenger's Tragedy, which is the last one of these we did. And uh, I, I thank you all for I, I realize, as I'm sure the audience does as well, that this takes um, emotional energy and and a lot out of people to have these conversations. But as I think Erica stated, it's really important that we do. And I'm so I'm so grateful that you all agreed, Keith, that you agreed to allow us to share your play once again. Um, uh, so from Red Bull, thank you. And thank the audience for coming and joining in this conversation. Yeah, thank you all. And, 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 and this this creative team and Erica, thank you for showing up to do this with me. I'm glad we're continuing to move forward with this work. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you all. 
Thank you. Thank you, Nathan and Red Bull for holding space for us. And it's so great to see you, Erica. I want to take classes with you. You're amazing. <laughs> and Keith, Josh, you know, I love you guys. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, also for, for being in the conversation with us. And the work doesn't end. Doesn't end. Um, and you, you four don't have to stick around if you want, if you don't want, but I am going to tell the audience if you enjoyed this about a few other things coming up. Um, also, you can still watch this. Uh, you can still watch American More until 7 p.m. tomorrow. So if you haven't or if you have friends or family who haven't who you think should, um, please send them the link. They've still got some time. Also, uh, actually, Keith is involved in this. If you are interested, we are doing a seminar series every Wednesday um, at 2 p.m. from 2 p.m. to 3.30 every Wednesday in October. We're doing a seminar series uh, of an all, all BIPOC group of actors, scholars, and directors discussing Othello. Um, we've been through the first two weeks of it, but both of them are up and available on the Red Bull website and YouTube page. And this next coming Wednesday will be the third one of those. Um, all of this is part of our Othello 2020, uh, which is just a big October month full of um, Othello and, and plays that explore um, race relations around this play. The, uh, the next project with that is this coming Monday in just a few days. We are doing a reading of the, the new play Keen uh, with the American Shakespeare Center. Keen is a play about the strange world of Shakespeare scholarship and what it is to be um, a BIPOC scholar in that world. Uh, which, uh, Erica, Erica you, I saw that eyebrow raise. Um, and it, it also ties in uh, Ira Aldridge and a number of things like that. There's some music in it. There's some comedy. There's a lot of pathos. It's a really interesting play. Please do check that out. That's at 7.30 on Monday. I think... That's all the things, um, uh, but please do. And Keith is involved in the seminar, so um, and and did Othello this last time, and it was actually a joy to hear it. Um, and uh, thank you all again for coming. Thank you all again for coming. This has been a Red Bull um, session and a post show discussion of the American Moor, and I hope to see you all again soon. <laughs>